Get ready for the United States of Doge. Donald Trump is tapping Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy to head up his new Department of Government Efficiency, a.k.a. Doge. The pair will work together to take a blowtorch to bloated government waste and dismantle its bureaucracy. Musk saying, quote, all actions of the Department of Government Efficiency will be posted online for maximum transparency. Anytime the public thinks we are cutting something important or not cutting something wasteful, just let us know. And here's Musk making his sales pitch while on the campaign trail last month. Your money is being wasted, and the Department of Government Efficiency is going to fix that. We're going to get the government off your back and out of your pocketbook. Musk joining President-elect Trump on his trip to Washington and got a standing ovation during a meeting with congressional Republicans. Elon has been so Wow, that looks great. All right, you know, Jesse, how unusual. I mean, the the uh, the power of eliminating positions and sectors and agencies and line items for people who weren't even elected and aren't employees, but we have total faith in those two. I do. I love those two and I like them together. Musk and Vivek. Just perfect. And I think Musk might be running for president. I'm going to put it out there. Bruce Where Wayne was and Dick he... Grayson. <laughs> Where he... was he born? South Africa. Oh, he can't? Hello, Jesse. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> I'm predicting he's not running for president. <laughs> Good call. But so I looked at some of the things we're spending money on. $20,000 for a drag show in Ecuador. $100,000 to study if sunfish become more aggressive when given gin or tequila. $100,000 to study if quail are more promiscuous if given cocaine. We don't need a study. They are. <laughs> $200,000 to make monkeys transgender. So that just, you take that off the table right there. And then we get ripped off for half a trillion dollars, Judge, each year for fraud. We're defrauded for a half a trillion dollars. They just steal it, and no one cares. No one does anything about it. We've had now four years in a row of a $7 trillion budget. Now, before the pandemic, it was like three or four trillionaire. We just doubled it. And then we kept it going even after the pandemic's over. So you got to slash that. You got to get rid of all these departments. And you got to make sure some of these people, if you move, say, the Department of Education to, I don't know, Omaha, maybe people don't want to relocate to Omaha. Maybe that may prompt them to look for jobs elsewhere. And that could help us out a lot because we're $36 trillion in debt. Thank you. All right, Dana. Um, Doge, it's an interesting term, and uh, it, it's, it's a form of cryptocurrency. Yeah. And what's amazing about it is that this is no relation to Dogecoin. It's the Department of, uh, of Government Efficiency. Uh, but it appeals to the crypto bros. It's like yeah. part of this whole feeling that we have about this new administration. It's kind of contemporary. It's with it. So it's like the new... This has been tried before, but not to this extent or with these types of people or with this yeah. kind of technology. So every administration comes in, they're like, we are going to do this, we're going to cut red tape, we're going to get rid of wasteful spending. The difference here is a couple of things. One, I think the two people involved, they probably never need to work another day in their life if they didn't want to, right? So they're doing this because they believe in public service and they want the country to do better. So their intentions are there and they're not looking to help themselves necessarily. Mm -hmm. However, don't at me on the electric vehicles, I'm going to get to that. Um, the other thing is that's different is that these are two very good communicators. So they will be able to do all those things that Jesse just said, but they will also use the technology in order to make it very transparent. So everybody can see it. You don't just have to watch one network or see it in one newspaper. It, it will be there for everyone to see. I am interested to see if they do something on the real estate issue because so many government employees have not come back to the office that we are paying rent. Wow, Federal wow. taxpayers are paying rent on buildings where you have 7% ocup occupancy, and that should end. That should go away. So that's one thing. But... The, if you look at the budget as a pie, the majority of the spending is mandatory spending on Medicare and Social Security. So you can do all of those things, and mm -hmm. it won't take you one day into taking care of the interest that we pay 
on our debt. But we won't mm -hmm. be touching but we won't. Social Security. Security. And, but yes. we will not be. But so, so they have their work cut out for them. But I think for both of them, one having done uh, a, a significant amount of innovation and electric vehicles and other things, rockets and all that stuff. He knows what it's like to be under the heavy thumb of government. And Vivek Ramaswamy on the healthcare side of things. Just yeah. personally, like, watching my husband build a business for a product that is basically just building a better mousetrap. It's not anything new. And it takes so long to get anything approved. A better what trap? A better no. mousetrap. It's not a mousetrap. It's a surgical device. I'm just saying it's just a phrase that if you want to build a better mousetrap, the government makes it so hard for you to ever actually get your business going that it holds people back. So that's the type of growth economy that they're talking about, I believe. You know, Harold, on, on the left, I think it's Alex Wagner who said that this whole thing is so Orwellian. Why is it so hard for people on the left to believe that there are those who have, you know, positive interest in, in bettering this country, especially with Elon Musk? I mean, he well, gave us elaborate. a Twitter file. The last time, I would, the last time we had a balanced budget was 1998, and it was a, a Democrat was in the White House. To Dana's point, uh, the leader, the president she worked for, had ideas on this. President Obama introduced Simpson Bowles. They came up with a mm -hmm. set of ideas to try to reduce the debt, but President Obama didn't support their their ideas once they put it forward. You even had uh, President Clinton. He came in and let and, and allowed Al Gore to run something called reinventing government. I'm rooting for uh, Vivek and rooting for Elon in this in this regard. I think the fact that neither of them neither of them have to work again. Uh, I mean, Elon's worth a couple hundred billion dollars, and a lot of that wealth uh, emanates from um, the car company. And there were it, certainly he understands the importance of government uh, in in the private sector because his space company and. And one other, and, and, and one of his other companies, including Tesla, uh, has benefited from from certain government policy. It's going to be interesting because Jesse, you made the point. Social Security won't be touched. I don't know how right. uh, you really make a dent in the, in the federal debt uh, without looking at the entitlement programs. I'm not suggesting that they slash things, but you have you, you're not going to be taken seriously when you talk about deficit reduction if you don't do that. The other reason I think it's important for President Trump to have this kind of effort underway, and they're formalizing it with the department is that some of the things he's talking about, the tax cuts and other things, all of, and including tariffs, all of those have the capacity and the ability, at least in the past, to, to trigger inflation. So the way you would counter that is you would reduce spending in other areas. So I'm rooting for these guys, and I, I'm hopeful that they can find bipartisan ways to get this done because you're going to need Democrats and Republicans to agree to some long-term fixes. But, here. you know, one of the interesting things is there is so much fraud going on in terms of the government. I mean, you know, no, you really don't have to scare people about entitlements. I mean, is we can start getting rid of the fraud in terms of, you know, Medicare and Medicaid. I mean, as a local DA, I found millions. It wasn't even my charge. So anyway, I, you, you, I don't think you're going to find thirty six trillion dollars. Well, worth of it, You're going to find a lot. We do. I hope we you're going to find a lot. But anyway, Greg, you want to wrap it up the way you want to wrap I'm just it up. Dis disgusted that your husband makes mousetraps. <laughs> yeah. <It's> very cool. <laughs> Way. It. It's a very cruel way to end a mouse's life. <laughs> um, if you think this is a bad idea, Harold, then you're a debt denier. I said it. I think it's a great idea. I know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but you know what? It is a massive existential c catastrophe just waiting for us. It's the, you can actually use the language of climate change correctly mm -hmm. when talking about the debt. The only difference is we can actually do something about the debt. You know, I love how they gave themselves a deadline. Yep. You know, bureaucrats yeah. never do that. Their, their only deadlines are when they're getting ready to go on vacation. It's July 4th, 2026, 18 months. It's an economic moonshot. Uh, none of these so-called experts, political leaders, took this role knowing that there's $35 trillion just sitting there because a lot of these guys, let's be honest, they're going to be dead before it ever comes due. So they don't care. That'll be for somebody else. Uh, but this is what happens when you have the people in the government making decisions about how much money they get. So you need an outside force to come in, like these two fellas. They're the necessary outsiders. They are the Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson of our economy, and they're literally working for us without getting a dime. I think it's great. Yep. So in your face, Harold. <laughs> yep. <a> little premise. <laughs> and everyone agrees the government is spending too much. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.